So I know you've got a bit of a history with with Cobia. Yeah, we both have a bit of history with Cobia, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> Cabby hooking this Cobia back in the day, back four or five years ago when we first really started being serious about this. He um he hooked up early morning and and this thing was going crazy. Holy shit! Holy shit! It changed a lot for us. It went from us just like going, okay, we're getting like a Jewfish, we're getting a tailor, to we can actually connect with Cobia. We can connect with Tuna. Like it, it raised the bar on what we'd expect off the rocks and it ended tragically. Ever since then, it, it's always been haunting us, the cobia. It's just like this thing in the back of our minds. Just, um, it's always a chance of one being there, and we never know when we're gonna we're gonna connect with one again. Actually, another day, over a few headlands down, um, I'm pretty sure I connected with one. It was in a, a couple years after Cabby's one, and again, similar story. It was just a horrible, horrible result. It had run me around another rock and Cabby was in my head going, we can't lose this one. I could hear him saying it, he was saying it out loud as well. But it was just the, the amount of pressure and the amount of stress on me was more than I've, any other fish. And um, I was free spooling, just holding my line uh, <laughs> while it was going around a rock. My line was on a rock going around out into another, um, out into the open ocean. And I just jumped in, swam out to that next rock, Cabby followed me. and flip the bail line back over, connected back to the fish and there's, there was one bommy, just one bommy and the fish was doing its head shakes, it felt solid, I'm pretty sure I said it's big a second before it took me straight into that bommy and pinged me, I was really devoted, I don't think I've been that devoted at a loss of any other fish, I was, near, like, I was nearly crying basically. <laughs> It was the last day of our trip to an island and we'd been catching mac tuna, long toms and um, we connected with some solid GTs, got completely smoked by them. We were going for one last spin, it was it. We were all ruined, all completely exhausted. We had blisters all over our feet, everything. Everyone was so tired. We couldn't even make it to the main headland. We were that tired. We, were, we just ended up going to this, this second headland and I was just casting kind of tripping out like in my you get into a bit of a routine you kind of I have my own little diver routine that I do and I was tweaking it <laughs> I, I thought I saw something behind someone's lure they were using surface lures and I thought I saw something so next cast me and Cabby cast out at the same time and um, I was going a bit faster a bit of a quick retrieve doing little tweaks and Cabby had a surface lure and behind his lure something came up and had a had a whack at it and before I even knew what was going on yeah, there was up. already my rod was just going boom 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 down I was like I'm on I'm actually on and um yeah it it was it felt heavy it felt good everything was right it was doing head shakes it felt like a solid good pelagic and I think I even said I'm on a, it's a pelagic like I was pretty sure about it and then um, we got a look at it, it came up to the surface, it was kind of arcing into the ledge around the corner and I was like, oh, it's a shark. And we land, we caught a few sharks that trip and we weren't overly psyched on it being a shark. And I, was, I was like, oh, okay. And just tightened up, there wasn't that excitement anymore. I was like, okay, it's a shark, I've got to actually just try and land this thing now. Tightened up pretty tight, got him out of there, which was pretty good that I wasn't stressing at that point because he was really going hard for those rocks. Turned him. And yeah, I was on the light setup, but I was going quite hard on the shark, which I thought was a shark. And um, it wasn't until he started tiring out a bit, he was on the surface. And we were all kind of just like silent for a little bit. We were just like looking at him. And it had, it had something behind it. There's something behind it. There's something. Another shark. I thought I was getting sharked. I was on a shark and I was getting sharked. So it was a really weird situation for my brain was just like, well, what's going on? Didn't know what was going on. Um, and Cavi 
I think it was Cavi that actually worked out what was going on. He, he, he just saw the fish, saw the stripe on him, and he was like, you're on a cobia. Am I on a cobia? No, is that actually a cobia? Dude, that's a cobia. I've got a fucking cobs, man. Oh my god! Big cobias! It hit me and I, I just couldn't lose it. Like, there was so, for me, there was so much at stake on that fish because of everything we've been through with that fish before. That I, I loosened off and I was, I was, I was playing it super light. I knew my setup was light. I was, I was being really careful and took a good 10 minutes of, of me slowly bringing it in. It would get close to the rocks. The second it saw the rocks, it, uh, getting close to the ledge, it would just take a run down. It had, had my heart and my throat. I'd, I'd just tighten up at that point. Just pray that he didn't ping. And as soon as he stopped running, I'd loosen off again and slowly bring him up. We gotta land it. Oi man, we gotta land it. Here we go. Oh no, 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 come on, come on. Chill, chill, it's okay. Yeah, he, he tired enough that it got to a point where um, Hamish was gonna have a have a grab at him. Wait, well, the leader's only 50. So try and grab his tail, not the leader. Oi, 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 go, 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 this is you guys now. I'd, I was stressing out how, how light the setup was, how light the line was. I only had 50 pound leader and 15 pound um, mono line. And yeah, I was just like, grab the leader, grab the tail, grab the leader, grab the leader tail. And and just tail. Took it out. And leader and tail, leader and tail. He, he grabbed the leader, and the second he touched the tail, the Let cobia go, just out, went, out, Burko went straight oh, under the ledge. I was just perishing, like go, go, so go, go, scared go. that I was gonna lose it. it it somehow didn't get me, it was it was just there. I think Hamish was pushing my line off of the ledge so that it didn't um, didn't ping. And got him back up and I just couldn't leave it in anyone else's hands. I had to be responsible for that fish and so I I just said, just take my rod man, take my rod. Wait, just take my take my rod man. Just take my rod. I, I think I said it a few times earlier, but this time he actually did. He took my rod and I was afraid that if we tried to land it on the ledge, like right there, like normal, it, something bad was going to happen, something devastating was going to happen. So I jumped in the water and swam out to it, and I got a, I got an alright grip on it, what I thought was an alright grip on it, and it went, it went crazy, it went snaking everywhere, doing like little shark snake jumps. I didn't even know what it was doing, and it slithered out of my hands, and I could feel it just underwater just touching my fingers and I got a good double grab on the tail. It was too, it was too solid for one, like one hand wouldn't go the whole way around its tail and I it with two hands but then swimming without any hands is pretty weird, especially with a, a wild fish in hands. Yeah, I, I somehow made it a couple of metres to, to the ledge but it wasn't working. I started screaming, I think I was just screaming, pull me up! little wave came out of nowhere, it was a little surge sort of thing came and kind of blew me around a bit and I, I washed up and I could, my toes felt, my toes got a little grip on a rock and I was like, oh, I'm kind of up, I'm, I'm up. The second wave hit and fully washed me all the way up and I was on my feet somehow, just holding this cobia that, oh, I don't even know, I didn't really get time to appreciate what was happening but it, it had blown my mind, I, I was on the rocks with this cobia fish of a lifetime for me in my hands and it was just, I don't know, it was, it was a pretty special moment for me. I Cavi got the lure out and it was so, it, it was so much emotion going, we didn't even, we didn't even hold the fish up to show camera, we kind of just, if you got a shot and like we kind of half showed the camera in the shot but yeah, it wasn't about that, it wasn't really about that at that stage, it was just about landing that fish and um, seeing it swim away. Yeah, it was it was a big, big moment. It definitely peaks. It's the peak of my fishing now. That that's taken a cake. It um, used to be that Spanish, but it, after that Kobe, I can't I can't think of any other fish that meant that much to me. It was fish of a lifetime. Fish of a lifetime.